the story goes, you know, it, uh, when I was, I went on a hitchhiking trip. Mm -hmm. In the first place of that story, I went on a hitchhiking trip. That's in the 30s, when mm -hmm. the things was awful poor, see? Well, anyway, I traveled down through the, the stage, and uh, I come to a place. I didn't have no money. I was just bumming, you know, hitchhiking through. So I wanted a place to stay all night. So, this fellow said to me, he said, uh, well, he said, uh, there's a house right across the road. He said, there. And he said, uh, Hi. you can Hi. stay in that house. It won't cost you nothing. But he said, uh, remember, he said, if you happen to hear anything in it, he said, uh, well, I said, uh, what is the, the cause of it? Well, he said, uh, I was told, he said, this house was haunted. Okay. Well, I said, I, I figure I can stay about as long in the house as a ghost is. <laughs> but I said, I don't believe in that stuff. Well, he said, go ahead. So I went over and I stayed all night in the house. And uh, come over the next morning, he asked me how I put the night in. I said, fine. And, uh, well, he said, you better stay around for a few days. So he gave me a job. I done a little work in the garden and stuff like that. And I thought to myself, well, he said, if you're looking for a job, he said, maybe he said, in a couple of weeks' time, he said, I could pick you up a job here, but stay around here for your board. So I done little jobs around this place and earned me board anyway, and I stayed in this house every night. So there was two young fellas come back one night. They got acquainted with them. And there were two McKinnon boys. <laughs> So, anyway, they asked me, how do I like to stay there? Oh, I said, great. I like to find. He said, uh, I said, uh, I wonder why didn't your father ever stay in this house? I said, uh, you take a nice property like this, a beautiful house like this. I said, uh, why, why didn't he stay in this house? I said, why did he go way across the road and out on the front of the place there I said, and build and leave a home like this and this locked up when I come here? He said, why, did you hear anything here? I said, no, I didn't. But I said, I didn't. I said, the other night, I said, of course, I said, I don't put no pass on this. I said, but the other night, the other guy, I said, wanted to stay with me here in the house. And I said, he went out to town over the town, and I said, uh, in fact, I said he was going to show. Well, I said there was no one around, and I didn't know too many around here, so I just went upstairs, and I laid down on the bed. How one fellow said to the other, he says, let's go home, Bill. Oh, I said, boy, don't be scared. I said, I'm going to tell you, I said, what I've seen and what i heard. But I said, there's nothing here to hand. So I said, I was laying in the bed, and the first thing I heard the other fellow come in, crump, crump, crump downstairs, and he takes off his boot, lump on the floor, the big boot fell. I, I said, that's the other guy now, he's back in town, maybe half drunk, probably no. So I was laying in the bed, and I said, uh, he come right upstairs. So he come up and, uh, and come in, and I wondered if he's going back downstairs again. All stairs, creak, creak, creak. So I looked, and there's a man going down the stairs, but he's got no head. The head right off at his shoulder. I said to myself, am I seeing things? He said, let's go home, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said, bye. I said, never mind. I said, wait till I finish this story. I said, what I see. So I said, he walked around stairs, down in the old kitchen, crumpity, crump, crumpity, crump. By and by he comes upstairs. And when he comes to the top of the stairs, I said, what slid braid in by me bed but a great big black casket? And he says, what did you do? I said, what would you do, Don? <laughs> I said, this lid, I said, just slowly opened like that, and it come right back, and I said, upset the man, no head. So, 
I said to him, he says, what did you do? Well, now I said, I'll just tell you now, boys, what I done. I said to him, I said, in the name of God, I said, what do you want of the like of me? He said, I don't want nothing of you. But he said, 11 years ago, well, he said, I was murdered here for me money. And he said, I'll tell you where it is and who murdered me. Well, I said, go ahead. So I said, he kept stalling this. And I said, I'd have sooner for him to have went than to tell me. For I said, I wasn't very, I was pretty <laughs> scared then. <laughs> so he said, he just kept on telling this. I will tell you who murdered me and what they murdered me for and where my money is. See? So I said, I got them foolish enough to ask me the question. Yeah. He said, who murdered them? Now I said, look, boys, I said, I want to tell you straight here who it was, but I said, don't you tell. He said, no. He told me your father murdered him here for his money, and he never got the money. So Bill said, God help us, he said, Daddy never murdered a man in his life. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, I had to take the two boys, which was 17 year old, mm. one in each hand, I said, and walk them home. They were pretty scared <laughs> lads. <laughs> but you know, it was a good story anyway. The story goes, you know, it's, uh, when I was, I went on a hitchhiking trip mm -hmm. in the first place of that story, I went on a hitchhiking trip.